Hungry? Order your favorite meals and drinks from hundreds of restaurants through the best app and have your food delivered to your doorstep. Download the Afri Delivery app now. Welcome back to the Playhouse. We just had some amazing lunch. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone reason, sorry to say that lunch it's courtesy of Afri Delivery. Yeah. How amazing is that? I know. <laughs> food order the foods. Uh, I'm new in Zambia, Lusaka. Downloaded their app, ordered the foods. Yeah. And the food was brought in. Yeah. So big shout out to Wallace for introducing me to Afri Delivery. <laughs> uh, our unplanned sponsors. <laughs> 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 But na na na. Yeah. If, if you're in Zambia, definitely get that. Download that app, Afri Delivery. Got to enjoy a good meal. Okay, mm-hmm. let's continue with this conversation. Yeah. So, you're back in Lusaka. First of all, are you okay? I'm good. I'm good. Okay, full, full. Okay. Like, <laughs> got energy is back. Okay. <laughs> um, you, you, you're back in Zambia. Uh, the mm-hmm. story of your mom was crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And and if I'm not wrong, now you're in the studio. Yeah. Okay, so so anyway, so we're back in the studio where we're now um, trying to figure out what this album is gonna sound like. Uh-huh. You know, it's uh, I'm presenting song ideas again. You have to understand there's that influence of being in the Midwest of America. So there is uh, uh, the music that I was doing most at Rama is soft rock, and then you have a lot of people who are, um, you know, there's that um, that American. You know, old gospel mm. kind of feel. So there are times I'm presenting a song, and Ian is like, "Nah, bro." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "No, you don't understand." So, because like a lot of my friends, because a lot of people again back home, back in the in Oklahoma, they're like, "Yo, we're waiting for that album. Maybe we need to drop an album." So, the first album is is coming now. Remember, the revelation is love revolution. But the first album idea, we we start working on it, 2009. And um, so you know everything is really just everything is going well. You know I'm I'm working youth director yep. um, for my church. Uh, my dad is good. Everything is good. Then um, we got to November 22nd of the same year. So 2009. 2009. Oh, yeah, 2009. 2009. Same year I was back. So um, I remember we were. So I would I was singing in church that morning. So we had two services. We had three services at our church. Uh morning, mid morning and then evening service. Mm-hmm. So my parents would duty attend the evening service. My dad just liked doing that. So um I remember that morning I was actually singing completely anointed in church and uh so then I got a uh then You know, as we're driving out with my mom, my dad goes, "Oh, he uh, says it in Bemba. Mush tireko newspaper. Get me a newspaper." So, in the night before, we're watching TV, laughing. You know, him and my mom. You know, just having a great time. So we drive off with my mom. So I end up singing in the first service of that. I sang. Um. So, then, just in between. The first service. My mom had gone shopping, mm. so just in between the first service and the second service, my phone rings. So, because we had taken a break, so my mom's like, "You need to come home." Like, "Oh, what's wrong?" Says something wrong with your dad. Yeah. So I quickly go and tell the pastor. I'm like, "Listen, uh, mom has called me. Says there's something wrong with my dad because I'm supposed to sing in the second service." So he asked one of the pastors to go with me. Uh, so we jump into the vehicle and we and we do a straight shot, like straight towards home. So I get there, you know, and and my mom and I rush to my mom's room, and uh, my dad is on the floor, you know, and he's got his arms over his chest like this. So my mom's like, "Help me, help me get him up." So I almost like start crying. Then she's like, "Ah." help him get him up so i'm like okay okay so i i pick him up and so her and i lift him up then the pastor comes and i had called my brothers 
and sisters and it's like hey we're going to the hospital something wrong with that so i put him in the car you know he's lying here and he's and he's almost like not there's nothing moving and you know mentally you don't understand what it's like to see the strongest person that you think you know mm. in that space mm. where you are lifting them what and um so we're rushing to the hair to the hospital 20 minutes longest 20 minutes uh and we get there and uh so we, you know we we called uh, another a nephew of mine dr malama he was actually he used to be commissioner of the police actually so he was mentored by my dad so he was a very close family and he also became mp minister of the same constituency my dad had been so we get there and um man everyone is there and the doctor checks does everything and he's like you know what he's gone what yeah and he's like he's gone and you're at that moment like it's almost like every that was the worst day like today like that was the worst day of my life like i just i didn't know like my brother damien you know tough guy hardly see him you know he doesn't like damien is not fond of showing emotion i remember him walking out quietly just went and I saw him I go had to go all the way outside before he, like he started crying as I like he was as you know my mom everybody was just broken my sister got there she's like shouting at doctors why haven't you tried to like you know why don't you try you know shocking him back to, like it was just yeah because then the doctors are trying to explain you know, when the pupils are like this and this is like this is how you know someone is gone gone so so we at that point at that point is when they decided that they so because my dad had served as a minister so usually in the country if someone is a minister they uh or served as a full minister they have to have a state funeral mm. so a state funeral was arranged at the time so my dad died on a sunday and uh we had to wait because again i had brothers and sisters who were coming in from germany mm. so they came in and um so we had the funeral it was it was a long couple of days man yeah. it was a long couple it was a whole week um so we 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 um so we we started you know it was it was a state funeral everything was a lot of things are very formal um it was just hard to get past all of that and so you know we buried and that was that was like a new chapter now uh, in my uh, life it was a new chapter was it was was your dad um of age i mean he was born in 1942 <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so and and so we when we had then we so we buried and um and this is when you know you you have these moments where you think about things like you know trauma or different things and So my workers asked me to go back to work because I'd taken a whole week off. It was like a whole week. So I said okay, and I was ready to go back and I went back to work um the following Monday. So I get I get into I get into the office, putting my stuff down. And um so there was something that I had to go and drop off. Right so I'm driving and I get to a gas station. This is 8 days after my dad has passed. I get to a gas station. And then as I'm there a guy comes to my window. So they're putting gas and a guy comes to my window and goes uh a newspaper like selling a paper. And I start to cry. and the guy the gas attendant is like are you okay i'm like no just put the gas and i go and park my and i'm shaking because the last words yeah. i ever heard my dad say was get me a newspaper and i am shaking i'm crying so i call my sister she's like no she says no I just stay put i'm like no no it's okay so i compose myself i drive to where i need to go 
I drop off the thing. I go back to the office. So she comes and meets me at the office. And so everybody's like, nah, you know, it's going to be okay. You know, so everybody's like, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. So, ish. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it was like, it, it was, it was in between. From the time that he had died, I'd cried. But up to that point, it was just like, now everything just kept on rushing. And uh, so we, so we, we, what happened was, my sister said, okay, here, get the keys to my house. You can go to my house and just, because there's no one there. Mm-hmm. So, you know, so I said, okay. So I went to her house. And this is, this is funny enough. I had this, it's, uh, I had this same, there's a guy I know who posted on, on Facebook today. Mm-hmm. And he was talking about, he, I saw him post a few days ago about losing his dad. Then today he posted again something about like missing his father and, Hugging. So I inboxed him. I said, listen. Um, today, today. Yeah, today. So I said, can I send me your number? So he sent me his number. So I called him up and I told him this story. And um, I was sitting in my sister's house now. I'm thinking, what? Do you know? How could you? So I'm asking God, like, you took my dad. Like, he took my father away from me. And then I, at that moment, I heard God say this. He said, um... You didn't lose your father. He said, I am your father. Every good thing that you saw in him was me loving you through him. And I realized at that point that the goodness of God was working through my father. But the image that I was seeing was him. But it was still God at work during the whole time. And he's like, I never, I've never left. I've always been your father. And I, he taught me in a huge, um, you know, message in terms of handling loss from great people. Because it's the people that really are amazing that leave a bigger hole in our lives. Mm. And it just shows the impact of how much God, this person allowed God to flow through them. You know, the more you, you're open to God, to work through you, to love people, the more people will miss that presence, Mm. you know? And the question is like, the question, who's going to fill that void? And God says, I'm still there. And it was always me. me. And um, I remember many years before that, like in 2006 or seven, my pastor had done a message called uh, Knowing God is Your Father. And he said, you should do a song about this. (laughs) And uh, I just sat on that but there was a melody that was in my head from that time as i like, uh, and it was i i always felt like i'm gonna write a song i'm gonna write a song i'm gonna write a song then um the following year it was his birthday so and usually every every birthday of his June June twentieth. I mostly I mostly cry in bed. Like it, sometimes it doesn't happen. And uh, so I'm crying as I'm listening to a song called River by Emily Sunday. And so I then I then I get up and uh, then I just took a paper and a pen. And that's when I just started writing. So the mystery revealed Christ through love and sacrifice, yeah, not of my own, but of the son. And uh, that's, that was when I wrote Father's Child. Revealed through 
true love and sacrifice Not of my own But of the Son He came to me In peace And held me in His arms And said today I found true love He said today I found true love So it has been since then I've been my father's child When I received his son in me Down at his feet is not where I am found to be But on a seat right by his side But on a seat right by his side I have tasted grace So sweet I feel let go Once and all So it's 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 uh, you know at the end of the day like it's it doesn't separate like it's almost like who shall separate me from the love of Christ, you know, um, to know that God's like, so I in even in the memory of the goodness of my father, it rem it showed me the goodness of God, you know what I'm saying, and where God says how much more, mm. you know how much more. If you who are who are evil do good things for yourself, like how much more am I? And so it was that magnitude of that. That's what that song really was about. And that's why even today, I honestly say like that's probably the best song I've ever written of all the songs. And for me personally, because it was, yeah, yeah, lyrically everything is just yeah. I don't think. What well, was mouthful. Yes. So did you start performing that before the album came out? Yeah, I think I first, usually most of my songs, I sang them in church before the album, <laughs> when in church, when in a setting. I was very fond of doing that, like singing a song that I haven't sung before in a, in a church setting, yeah. you know, um, and, and mostly that came from that impact where people are like, oh, where's that song? I really want that yeah. song. So Father's Child came from that. that, one, um, that what was the reception of that? Uh, it was it was powerful. I, I still remember. I think a lot of people gave their lives to the Lord that Sunday morning. It was very powerful, um, you know. So a lot. It, it was always a lot of the songs came from like incidences, moments, and I think that was that was after that. Still, I think that's when like things really, for me, like started changing in a huge way. You know what I'm saying? Like where. Um, I think there was a lot of undealt with pain that began to assure as in there was you know where if you're if you're in that state you're you know you just you're coasting mm. and you, you you reach a point where we don't know what we're doing we don't know what what to do next and i was always like Man, like the following year, like I got married the following year. And I remember the the conversation I had with my dad was like, I found somebody. He's like, oh man, I'd love to meet. I've even been wondering. And me and my dad never had a conversation about females. But then it was like, first time I said, okay, you know, I think I found somebody. And he was open to that. Like, oh, this thing. And I wish I had gotten a chance to meet her. Mm. You know, um, though when he was sick, she had, she had gone with the prayer team from our church to go and pray with my dad my mom i think kind of knew who she was but you know the following year i'm getting married and i don't you know you don't have your father with you or and now you're entering marriage and you 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 have um a sense of there's a belief system i have where i feel like we 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 go back to settings in default settings as i when in marriage 
we go back to what we pictured mm. you know and and the thing is when when you're from two different cultures or what you're trying to mimic is not there to gain reference of why did you do it like this mm. i'm trying to be like this but why did you do it like this mm. you know what i'm saying i need your guidance like show me why why it was that you did what should i do in this situation yeah. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. and so much of much of my understanding of my com- is issues when we had with marriage was always based upon the fact that two different cultures or you know i really that's a part i don't really like talking about in terms of my personal life because yeah. i was i like as a musician i'm cool i can take whatever people yeah. throw at me but i feel like i'm very protective over my family mm-hmm. so but in just that understanding so it even gave me a statement which i which i posted up i remember last year and a lot of people like is that 900 comments in like a few <laughs> what i said um we date like europeans but we marry as africans <laughs> and i think that stems from the fact of when you're courting you're you're courting with them with a westernized mindset to go for dates what not even the teachings on courtship are both based on 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 western culture mm. yeah <laughs> okay. well, uh, wait a bit i was assuming because this guy is doing this uh, oh yeah, no ah, we're deep oh, right? 